All right, so what we want to do here is show how we can make adjustments uh, to change the depth at which the sample will begin to be cored. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that everything is in the home position there, that the slider is back against this block, and that the end tube, this last part of the pickpocket tube, is flush with the piston that's firmly on the end. Once we have it in that position, we're going to tighten down on this uh, thumb screw to make sure that these blocks are now fixed because between this thumb screw and this set screw, that's going to fix this stroke length that we have when we're sliding that forward. Once we have them in position, we can pull this tool from its handy storage location and work to loosen these two points. These are labeled as points three and four. So again, points one and two are tightened and snug. Points three and four we're gonna loosen so that we can make an adjustment. So I use the tool and I make a, an adjustment to loosen each of the set screws. Loosen them enough, but not so much that they fall out of the hole. And there I have them both and I'm gonna put the tool away. Now that I put the tool there, now I'm free to reposition this. And this is where I would find what depth at which do I want to tar start taking that sample. So I can either retract this or push it forward. In this case, for the demonstration, I'm going to push it forward to minimize the pre-positioning of, of the piece before it starts to take a sample. So just to get that moving, I'm just going to spin that forward a little bit. You can see now we only have a slight offset of maybe a half inch. It would be best to kind of put that onto a flat surface and use a ruler or something to measure that. Once I've confirmed that it's in that correct position, now I can bring the tool back out, tighten these spots up, these set screws. Snug them in place. By doing so, I'm now setting the new position of the offset where I start to take my sample. Again, push that back in a hole all the way through until it gets uh, captured by this, uh, well, it's actually in the front here, it gets captured by that spring-loaded uh, uh, device that holds the tool safely in place. Now I'm ready to take my sample. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate on a pickpocket that we've made an adjustment to here, you can see that we've moved this forward so there's a much smaller offset. And what I'm gonna do is demonstrate what it looks like inside a machine. We won't see any grease in here, but we will be able to see what's happening to the device. So you, here you can see I have an end bell of an electric motor. You can see the Zerk fitting where grease is added when it's needed. And there's a drain here and we've removed that drain plug. That drain plug is a 1 8 inch NPT plug, so it leaves us enough room to insert this device. So what I'm going to do is come up from the bottom, I'm going to go through that opening, and then I'm going to go until I stop, and that's my offset. So I've gone that far into the machine before I'm going to start coring my sample. Now that I'm holding this fast to the side, now I can bring the slider forward first loosening the thumb screw that lets this travel, and then I bring that forward to core the sample. Now you can see inside that the tube has gone up to the center of that housing. While that may not be the ideal position in this case to take a sample, it certainly is good that we're able to demonstrate what's happening in the machine. Now I have cored the full length of travel. Before I remove, I tighten down on this thumb screw that's now going to hold that in place as I withdraw that. So as I withdraw that sample now, this will be filled with grease. My sampling is complete. I'm ready to transfer that to a storage tube. And I would do that by pushing this device on the end, this push pin on the end, and that's going to knock that off the end. This is what's going to go into the sampling vial and taken to your analysis place.